Phil here with another video devoted to the AW64 Gold, one of my favorite sound cards. Lots of stuff in this video, it's packed with information. We're gonna look at the card, the drivers, how to install it in MS-DOS, how to diagnose it, how to configure the resources. We're gonna look at the DOS mixer, how to configure reverb and chorus and use 3D stereo enhancement and how to load sound fonts in MS-DOS to use the general MIDI general synth and MT32 emulation. Then we're gonna turn towards Windows, how to install the drivers. We're gonna update the drivers. I'm gonna show you what the AW64 Gold installation CD has to offer and how to change resources under Windows 98. And then we're gonna look at loading sound fonts to have a better MIDI experience with DOS games with general MIDI loaded from within MS-DOS. So lots of information, enjoy this video. Okay everyone, so let's have a look at the card. Let's start with the back panel connectors. So we have a line in here, a microphone in, then we've got line out with RCA connectors, and then here we've got the MIDI and joystick port. Now, for to use the MIDI and joystick port, you need uh, some cables and a couple of types. I've got this one here. So that goes into your sound card and then you get your MIDI in and MIDI out. If you still want to use your joystick function, you can get a different type of cable which has a joystick pass through. So this goes into your sound card and the joystick plugs into here and you'll still get your MIDI in and out. So just make sure you get the right type of cable that applies to you, to your scenario. Alrighty, so let's have a look at some of the connectors on the card. We've got the uh, CD in connectors here. So that's where you plug the analog output from your CD-ROM drive. And down here, a little bit hard to read, so I'm just gonna bring that up really close. That is the PC speaker header, so you can uh, build yourself a cable. CD audio cable works really well with that. You just have to swap one of the pins and you just route that to your motherboard uh, speaker connector and then the PC speaker sound gets routed through the mixer. There is uh, another connector over here, the SPDIF. That's a digital interface and it uses the uh, 0.5 volt standard for coax. So just gotta make sure you get the right bracket. I don't have one. They seem to be quite rare. The card came with the uh, bracket that hooks up to this, but I don't have one. So I've actually never been able to try out that functionality. And then what else we got? We got some two connectors here. That's where you can upgrade uh, the memory. There are two types of memory upgrades. There's uh, an official one, which is quite expensive. And then there's this one, the uh, Simcon. And there are two types, there's one for the AW64 Gold and one for the value of all the standard edition and different types of memory configuration. So 32 megabyte is the biggest one. And then that just goes onto your sound card. And that's really it in terms of uh, connectors. There's not much more to it. So we're gonna move on to the next part. Drivers for the AW64 Gold can still be downloaded from the Creative website, but you never know in the future they might decide to take them down. So I've put them up all on my website. They can get the uh, files for DOS, Windows 5.98, but also for MS-DOS mode. I've also made two video tutorials uh, showing you how to do the installation under MS-DOS and MS-DOS mode. Especially the installation for MS-DOS mode is a little bit tricky, so it might be worthwhile checking out uh, the videos. MS-DOS 6.22 driver installation is pretty straightforward. You just need two drivers, the SB Basic and CTCM BBS. Those are self-extracting executables, so I highly recommend that you put them in subfolders. In my machine, for example, I put them under drivers slash SB Basic and drivers slash CTCM BBS. And then from there, just go to, to the SB Basic folder, run install, and the installation uh, commences. At some stage, you have to point the installer to your CTCM directory, where it will configure the resources. It'll configure your config and autoexec uh, files, and then it'll reboot the system. And at this point, after the reboot, all the drivers should be loaded, and you should have a fully functioning uh, Sound Blaster AW64 Gold. Diagnose is a diagnostic utility that makes sure there are no conflicts and that everything is in working order. There's a section at the end where you can check out that 8 and 16 bit digital playback is working and you can also check FM synthesis as well as the AWE synth. And 
I do recommend that whenever you change any resources that you do run diagnose just to be 100% sure that everything is in working order. Configuring resources is done through software. The AW64Gold doesn't have any jumpers. The program you need to use is called CTCU and you'll find it in C slash CTCM. So just type CTCU and the configuration utility will launch. What you need to be aware of, you can't change configuration zero. That one is the default configuration. So you need to change the configuration to configuration one or one of the other numbers and then you can successfully change uh, the resources. You'll have a test button where to make sure that there are no conflicts and then at the end just press uh, OK and accept all the prompts and the machine will then reboot. The DOS mixer for this card is called Mixer Set. So just type Mixer Set, you'll find it in the SB16 folder and the mixer will open. If you're not using any inputs, for example, if you haven't got a PC speaker connected to the PC speaker heading or you're not using the line input, uh, you can happily mute them. Under input, that's to do with recording. If you're not recording anything, which most of us playing games uh, won't be doing, you can also untick all the boxes. The output section is quite important. You need to leave those ticked, for example, if you've got a CD audio cable connected or a line in from another sound card. If you've got two sound cards and you want to listen to that as well as the AW64, I just unticked because I just wanted to explain this in the video. Hit the save button and all the settings will get remembered. So after the next reboot, the same settings apply. The AW64 Gold is one of the few cards that allow you to set reverb and chorus for FM synthesis. You do that through the AW Util utility. Best is it to run the awutil with the slash question mark command because that will give you a little help. And then slash r with a number 0 to 100 you uh, change the reverb and with slash c from a number from 0 to 100 you configure the chorus. I recommend not going with a setting that is too high. The benefits of all of this is adding a bit of extra life to some of the old games. So we're talking games that have no MIDI support whatsoever. Because even old games like Monkey Island or Indiana Jones, they support MT32 uh, music from, uh, with MIDI. And in that case, you wouldn't really want to play around with that because MIDI is far superior. However, in old games like we've got here uh, Iron Man, it's an old uh, racing game, or Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which only su support FM synthesis. Here, by using re a reverb and chorus, you can bring some new life into these old games and you get a bit of a, a stereo effect and just a wider soundstage. So definitely something that's really cool about this card and you should definitely check out when you play some of these old games. The 3D stereo effect can also be applied to the AW64 Gold. It just gives the uh, sound card a wider sound stage. You can do that in the mixer by ticking the 3DSE tick box and then pressing save. But there's also a DOS command line utility to turn this effect on and off. Under MS-DOS, the AWE64 Gold can emulate General MIDI, General Synth and MT32. You need to do that by loading uh, sound fonts in the SBK format. You do that with the AWE util command and type it in slash em colon and then either the words GM, GS or MT. 
The SPK files, the general media SPK file comes shipped with the uh, SP Basic driver. The other two files can be found on the AW64 uh, Windows 98 installation disk, but I've also uploaded it on my website. Now, compatibility under DOS I found very uh, limited. Uh, I could not really get it going. Lots of games uh, rebooted the machine or in, in private here, for example, you could hear music for a while, but then the machine eventually reboots. So it seems that this does not work very well and it's not probably a, a feature that I would uh, promote too highly. And if, if you're looking to buy this card or, or get this card because of the general media emulation under DOS, I think you're much better off getting an external, an external mini unit than relying on this emulation. Installing the AWS64 Gold in Windows 98 is really straightforward. Just insert it into the ISA slot, turn on the machine and Windows 98 will detect the card. Windows 98 is a plug and play operating system, so it will configure all the resources automatically. All the drivers are shipping with Windows 98. However, it's an older version of the driver. It's version 4.37.00.1998. There's a driver update available on the website and I'm going to show you that in a moment. There is a driver update available for Windows 95 and Windows 98. It goes under the file name of SBW9XUP and you just unpack it and run an executable inside. This will update Windows 98 driver to version 4.38.00.0016. For playing games, the stock standard drivers and the driver update are perfectly sufficient. However, if you're interested in having all the bundled applications that came with the original uh, AW64 installation disk, you can also head to my website and download the image. It's a 70 or 90 megabyte file, burn it into a disk and you've got the full installation CD. It gives you a lot of uh, little utilities. Um, but the main thing it gives you is the ability to loud, uh, load sound fonts into the AW64 and then either have improved MIDI playback by listening to MIDI files, but really what most people use the AW64 and the sound fonts for is to run MS-DOS games from within Windows and use general MIDI emulation. And unlike MS-DOS, under Windows it actually works really really well. So if that's something you want to do you will definitely need the AW64 installation CD. So here we're just looking at the installation process and towards the end um, we can see the, the what applications are actually being installed. Configuring resources, that means changing things like the interrupt, DMA or addresses, in Windows 98 is really straightforward. You just do that in the device manager. So you just double click in device manager, manager on the Sound Blaster 16 entry. And here again, you have to change the configuration away from configuration zero, for example, configuration one. And then you can change the interrupt, the DMA and the address. Again, that is very useful if you are running into a game that is hard coded to use Interrupt 7, or you've got another sound card or another MIDI card in your machine. Loading sound phones into the memory of the AW64 Gold is something a lot of AW users do. The more memory you have, the larger the sound phones you can load, and usually the better the quality. The stock AW64 Gold comes with four megabyte of memory, which can be expanded either with the original creative memory upgrade or with a third-party SIMCON adapter. I've got such a model, I've got the uh, 32 megabyte model and that allows me to load fairly large sound fonts. Note that it takes quite a while for the sound fonts to actually load onto the memory of the card. It's quite slow and every time you reboot your computer or you start Windows, the process uh, repeats again. So every time uh, it has to load the sound font. Once the sound font is loaded, you just open your uh, an MS-DOS session, run your game, but in the sound in the music driver, you don't select AW, you select general MIDI and port 330 if you've got the uh, standard resources and you haven't changed anything. And that way you will get an improved MIDI experience compared to the standard AW synth. Thank <laughs> you.
And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. As always, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, spread the word, any questions, comments, please leave them down below, and I'll see you again in one of my future videos. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.